Alright, I'm Nico. This is Adrian. Can, right, what's going on? Can we look going? at Titus chapter two? Before we go to Titus chapter two, before we go to Titus chapter two. Okay. Let's go from the very foundation which you was building with the brother. Because I heard Cornelius. No, I heard Revelation, I heard Acts, I heard First Timothy, you know, it's kind of all over the place. Yeah. So what's the basis of the understanding that you have? Okay. Let's start from the foundation okay. to build everything up. Alright, so let me, let me just back all the way up, okay? If we look at what scripture is and what scripture is for, God gives us, God gives us his word so that we can be saved, so we can be sanctified, so that we can grow in the likeness of, um, grow into the likeness of who he is. Okay? And so the way that he does that is he does it through the whole narrative of scripture from the very beginning, Adam and Eve, all the way to Revelation. Okay? Now we see all throughout scripture, God has always had his eye on the whole world. He has always had his eye on all nations. That's why uh, in the very beginning, God says be fruitful and multiply. Then he, this is why he's upset in the Tower of Babel because they were trying to stay in one place. You look in, uh, I want to say it's Psalm 67, but he's saying, let my glory be among the nations. He's saying over and over, his eye has been on the nation. The way that he does it is he uses Israel to be a light to the Gentiles. Then we get, then we get to uh, Jesus. Jesus came specifically for the Israelites first, for the Israelites first. But then Paul gets into it and he talks about how uh, he talks about how if it wasn't for Israel rejecting Jesus, then the people who were Gentiles would never get to see him. And now that we have the Gentiles who get to see Jesus, it's like, man, what about when we get to Revelation? It says people from every nation, tribe, and tongue will be worshiping him at the throne of God. So, I mean, those are just some of the things that bring. Give me the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, and verse 12. Can I, and we're going to touch on that. We're going to touch on that. What did Bible go you had, brother? Can I borrow your Bible? Yeah. Thank you. Thank now, I want to touch on everything you said. Please, please. Because I don't want to go to one point, then it's over here, then it's yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then all hell break loose. Teach up. Bring that out in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews what? Right, chapter 5 and verse 12. Bring that out, Ken. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter wait, 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 5 wait, wait, and verse 12. I want to get that. I want to get that. I want to get that. I'm sorry. Right, let's wait for the brother to get there. Hebrews, chapter 5 and verse number 12. Hebrews 5. And as you read, can you understand? Can you help us understand what is the context? Like where? I got you, brother. Where I got you, brother. is the author of Hebrews going? I got you, what brother. What is he saying? We're going to break it all the way Hebrews down for five, what? In twelve, the book of Hebrews, chapter five, and verse twelve. Bring it out. For when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers. The Lord said, "The time we ought to be teachers." Give me the book of First Timothy, chapter one, and verse number seven. Read. Ye have need that one teach you again. What the Lord said? Ye have need that one teach you again. Give me the book of Romans chapter 2 and verse 20. The Lord said that he have need that one teach you again, man. Huh? Right, let me get another reading. I need Romans chapter 2 and verse 20. The Lord you, said, hold on, hold on, brother. I'll let you speak. I know, but, but, but. There's no you, but, this, brother. No, 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 I'll let you speak. Now no, I have to rebuttal. There is no wait, brother. I respected you as a man. You got to respect me as a man. Read that again. For when, for the. The time ye ought to be teacher. Now this is the foundation. Because everybody want to teach, but nobody wants to be taught. Everybody wants to have understanding and lead, but nobody wants to follow to the light and understanding of the Lord. You know? Ye have need that one teach you again. So you can keep talking. Ye have, have need that, that one teach you again. The Lord said ye have need that one teach you again. Bring that up. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter one and verse seven. Desire to be teachers of the law. What the Lord say? Desire to, to be, be teachers, teachers of the law. You have men that desire to be teachers of the law. They shake their hand. They open up the Bible. They see, okay, this is going into that. This is going into that. What did the Lord say, man? Desiring to be teachers of the law. Understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. And this is literally a lot of men in this world. They have no understanding. They don't know what the hell Timothy's talking about and Paul's talking about and why Paul was sent there. How many missionary journeys he went. Whether it was PC, AD, what the context of the situation was. Hey, they don't know a damn thing. They're desiring to be teachers but don't have any understanding what it is that they're reading. Read that again. What verse desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Bring that out in the book of Romans chapter 2 and verse number 20. Come on, bring it up. Wait, wait, wait. I want to get there. I want to get there. I want to get there. This is the book of Romans. Wait, 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 wait. Romans chapter 2 and verse number 20. And we're going to go break it down to you, man. Right, and go it, to the book of Isaiah chapter 28 and verse number 23. Bring it up. This is the book of Romans chapter 2 and verse 20. 
and instructor of the foolish. What the Lord say? And, and instructor, instructor of the, the foolish. Hey, a lot of men, they're instructors of foolish men. So they go and they sit down in church and then they get to listening. They watch T.D. Jakes. They watch Creflo Dollar. They get on YouTube. They feel like they're getting an understanding of what the Lord is talking about, but they have no understanding because the men instructing them are foolish teachers. That's Read right. that again. An instructor of the foolish. A teacher of babes. No, a teacher of men. A, a teacher, teacher of babes. A teacher of elders. A, a teacher, teacher of babes. You have men that are a teacher of babes. Read. Which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teaches another, teaches thou not thyself. And we have to, through the spirit of Yahweh the righteous, we have to teach ourselves by the Lord being the ultimate teacher. So let's start from the foundation of everything. Now, brother, you would be an Israelite according to the Bible. God's chosen people to go here, go there, have an uproar, cut you to shreds, and have you run away. It's not profitable, man. I did not travel all the way here to see you flee. We want to get you built up, brother. Right. And it's a very humble thing that you sit down and be taught, man. Right? Give me that in the book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 1. Give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 23. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 23. Bring it up. Give ye ear. And hear my voice. What the Lord say? Give ye ear and hear my voice. So the chief thing to understand knowledge, brother, is to hear the words of the Lord. Not to talk, not to be confrontational, not to have a point every five seconds, not to talk while another man is speaking, but to hear the words of life. Now we're going to break this thing down from the foundation. Any question you got through the spirit and grace of the mercy and the Lord, we're going to break it down and answer it. Now go ahead. We're going to go back and forth through the spirit as men. Give me the book of Psalms, right, chapter 11 and verse number 7. It's on you. Uh, can we look at... Titus. Let's go to Titus. Titus chapter 2. I'd like to read like just a, a passage. Let's go to Titus chapter 2. Before you go to Titus 2, let's go to Titus 1 and 1. Let's go to Titus chapter 1 and verse 5. Let's get the context of Titus. You understand? Because Titus was an elder, a bishop over Crete. And Paul sent them out there over hundreds of Israelites that are around that city. In those isles, you understand? To build up those men that were Israelites. Bring that out in the book of Titus, chapter 1, and verse number 5. It's the book of Titus, chapter 1, and verse 5. But this cause left I thee increase. The Lord said through the hands of Paul, for this cause. What is that cause that Paul is talking about? Let's get the foundation of the book of Titus. Put them in order to put what he left, what he left that remains out of order to put it into order. Give me the book of Titus, chapter 1, and verse 15. We'll read on from there. Come. But this cause left... Left I thee in Crete that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. That thou oughtest set in order the things that are wanting. So Paul, through the hands of Titus, set up the bishops. So, like he set up the elders, he set up all of the men in Crete that were Israelites. These men were Israelites. You have to understand that. Read on. And ordained elders. And then what? And, and ordained, ordained elders. elders. Give me the book of First Peter, chapter five and verse one. Because who are elders according to the Bible? When you hear these words, elders, brethren, bishops, pastors, apostles, evangelists, right, prophets, these are talking about the children of Israel. So you have to understand the context of what Paul is even talking to. Why Paul is coming to these men? Why Paul is breaking these things down through the Spirit? You know? Elders in every city, as I have appointed thee, as I have appointed thee, right? Bring that up. It's the book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 15. Bring it out. Unto the pure, all things are pure. Unto them that are defiled and are believing, nothing is pure. Start at verse 12. 12. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. Do what? Rebuke them sharply. Read on. That they may be sound. In the faith. Hold on, that the Cretans may be found in the faith. Who is the faith for? And why did Paul say that? To rebuke these men sharply that they could be built up and sound in doctrine in the faith. Who is the faith for? And what is the faith? Give me the book of Romans, chapter 4, and verse 4. Give me the book of Romans, chapter 9, and verse number 30. I just asked them to read Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Taking me all over the place. Well, brother, I have to take you all over the place because these are the witnesses. The Lord said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, shall every matter be established. But I find that a little disrespectful because, hold on, hold on, I find that a little disrespectful. I just asked you to go read Titus 2 and 11, 
and you taking me here, here, and here. Well, brother, this is not the Christian church where you raise your hand and ask somebody to read something, and we're at your disposal. Well, we're up here to be teachers. But we're not up here for you to tell us what to read, and we just read it, brother. All right. Thank you. And if you're going to be effeminate, brother, no, and, and, and literally saying, be emotional, I'm not then you'll, emotional. you'll never I understand the word. I just recognize you're not willing to converse. I am willing to converse. Oh, no, but before we make a point, brother, you have to understand who the Cretans are. Right. You have to understand why Paul was sent to them. I'm very... I'm, you have to understand the context. I'm very, very, very well versed with the book of Titus. No, you're not, brother. You don't even know. You haven't even given me the opportunity to tell you if I am well, or not. Well, brother, when was the book of Titus written? Who was it written for? Who are the Cretans? And where was Crete at? I can't tell you none of that. Well, brother, you're not okay. very versatile okay. well, in the book of Titus, then. Listen, listen. Maybe, okay, maybe I'll... Did not the Lord say prove all things? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Brother, if you literally know the book of Titus, brother, okay. prove it. I overspoke. I overspoke. I don't know the book of Titus that well, okay? But I'm just saying, I asked you to go to Ch Titus chapter 2, verse 11, and you just didn't. And the, Let's go so to Titus chapter 2, and verse 11. And that's why I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to be out. I've enjoyed it's the book of Titus book. chapter 2, and verse 11. Bring it up. For the grace of the Most High that bringeth salvation have appeared unto have appeared to all men. So if this is an epistle, who is this epistle written to? Because the wicked is going to flee. The wicked is going to flee with no understanding, being emotional. Right? Are you a real man? Are you going to follow him? Are you going to follow him? Hey, are we here? Are you going to follow him? Are we here to build this other whole place? Are you going to be a man? Are you going to build a whole place? Are you going to build a whole place? Are you a builder or a breaker? What you doing though? What you it's the book of Proverbs, chapter 28 and verse 1. The wicked flee. The Lord say. The wicked The Lord say. The wicked flee. The Lord say. The wicked flee. We know that pursuit, but the righteous are born as a lion. But the righteous are born as a lion. But the righteous are bold as a lion. But the righteous are bold as a lion. You know what other men do? They run for help. They try to talk to other men and started talking to me and getting caught by the words of the Lord, man. We're not out here for no games, brother. I'm not you cannot read that and flee off. Give me the book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 11 and let's break it down through the Spirit. What that's really talking about. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 and verse 10. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 4 and verse 10. Give me the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. Hey, brother, you just humble down and you're not. Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. Bring it out. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. Now, the grace of God that bringeth salvation. What is this talking about? Give me the book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 12, so we can get the context of the situation. Because each of these are epistles. You understand? Paul actually went to the church of Galatians. Actually did, man. At 48 AD, 49 AD. Right. Then he went to the church of Thessalonica. You understand? At 53 AD. Then he went on and on and on to all of these churches, setting them up through the spirit with your epistles and letters to the Israelites. This, oh, man. Man. This is the book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 11. Bring it For out. the grace of God that brings salvation. For the grace of God. Grace and mercy is to his saints. Give me that in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse number 15. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 15. Bring it out. This the people saw and understood not. And what? And understood it not. And what? And understood it not. This the people saw and understood not. Neither laid they up this in their minds. They have no understanding. That his grace and mercy. That is what? That his grace and mercy. What did Titus say? That, that is his grace and mercy. mercy. That his grace and mercy in the book of Titus is with his saints. Is what? It's, it's with, with his saints. It's with who? It's, it's with, with his saints. saints. It's with his saints. Nobody else can have grace and mercy. No other nation, man. I'm tired of Jake trying to save these damn nations, man. Right. When they had a foot on that damn neck for generations, man. Right. Ain't a damn thing I'm going to do for these nations but put a chain around their neck, man. That's right. Yeah. Titus chapter 2, 1 and verse 12. Verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God. Verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Right. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing 
It said looking for that blessed hope. When you go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 3, you understand what hope is for. You understand what grace and mercy is for. You cannot open this Bible, think it pertains to you and start reading it, man. Right. Start getting delusional and think God loves everybody, man. When these are actual epistles written to the Israelites by the hands of Paul and the mighty men in the scriptures, man. Right. You have to break these things down righteously, man. Give me the book at uh, uh, Galatians, man. Let's go to Galatians. Chapter 2 and verse number 8. Because I'm tired of people not understanding these epistles. Give me 2 Peter, right? Chapter 3 and verse number 15. Bring that up. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 2 and verse 8. Bring it up. For he that wrote effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Toward the who? Toward, toward the, the Gentiles. Gentiles. Paul said I was mightily in this thing towards the Gentiles. So with a Paul, he got the understanding in the book of Acts. You understand the ninth chapter. He literally got sent by the hand of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah the Righteous to go teach the Israelites that are spread abroad. And what did Paul do? He immediately did not confer with flesh and blood. You read about that in the book of Galatians chapter 1 and verse number 12. Bring that up. You know? And give me the book of Acts chapter 9 and verse number 7. Verse 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars. Because they were literally the elders. Peter, James, and John. They were the pillars of the church. You literally had the Sanhedrin. That were built up of 70 men. You had the circumcision, and then you had the uncircumcision. You had the elders that were literally at Jerusalem. You would have rank. You had Peter, James, John. Then you had the 12. Then you had the 70 sent out in the book of Luke, the 10th chapter. Then you have all the rest of the men. After them, you would have Paul. Bring that out in the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse 12. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse 12. Bring it out. For I neither received it of men, neither was I taught it. But by the revelation of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. But by what? But by the revelation of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Hey, Paul wasn't taught by man, man. Nobody jacked up Paul, beat him down, and said, this is going to be the doctrine. Take it and then twist it around and teach the Gentiles that everybody could be saved by the hand of the so-called white man, the Chinese man, the East Indian, and all the Arabians, man. He got taught by Yahweh Shah the Righteous. Read on. Verse 13. For ye what? have heard. Touch, touch. Come on. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past. Ye have heard of my conversation in time past. In the book of Acts, the eighth chapter, how Paul persecuted the church. You know? In the Jewish religion, how that beyond measure, I persecuted the church of the Most High and wasted it. Read. And profited in the Jews religion above many, my equals in mine own or nation. He said he did what? Read that again. Religion above many, my equals in my own nation. Read that precept over. And profited in the Jews' religion. And profited in the Jews' religion. Give me the book of Acts chapter 5 and verse 36. Give me the book of Acts. Hold that too. Give me the book of Acts chapter 22 and verse number 3. Because you had literally a man that was a teacher of the law. Gamaliel. That Paul went through. He went all the way to Jerusalem because he lived in Tarshish. To be taught up in the doctrine and understanding of the law. So Paul was literally a prophecy, man. He yeah. literally came to life, he knew the law, and then he jumped in the face by the mercy of Yahweh Shah. Right. This is the book of Acts chapter 5 and verse 36. Bring it out. For before these days rose up to Adis, boasting himself to be... That's 35. 35? 36. 34. Start at 34. Come. Verse 34. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee. Hey, what? A, a Pharisee. Pharisee. This is the man that taught Paul. So you have to understand who Paul is. Paul isn't a nigga that's running around with his hands like this. Everybody come and be saved. Paul is a wise man, a doctrine of the law. He's a Pharisee. He got taught by a Pharisee, a teacher of the law from Jerusalem. Named Gamil Gamaliel. Right, Gamaliel. Right, he was a doctor of the law. So when Paul was getting brought up and getting taught, Paul was a Pharisee from his youth up. Through his father and through his lineage, a mighty Benjamite from old, you understand? He came on the scene, he got taught, he went up to Jerusalem, they had classrooms, they had colleges in the ancient world. He got brought up with the understanding of Yahweh Shah, you understand, through the law and then through the mercy of Yahweh Shah, through the chariot, he got taught by first hand Yahweh Shah the righteous. You know? A doctor of the law. He was a nigga. A, a doctor, doctor of, of the, the law. law. A doctor of the law. Right. right, give me that in the book of Galatians. Read on from there. And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals. Above many my equals. Because Paul was an elder in the spirit. Because he knew more than the teachers that were before him. You know? And my own nation, before being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. You know? 
Brett, when it pleased the most high. When it who, what? When, when it, it pleased the, the most high. When it pleased the most high. Who separated me from my mother's womb. Who separated me from my mother's womb. What's the significance of being separated to teach these whole nations, man? That everybody could be saved, man. Hey, back to the so-called white man, man. Back to America, man. I don't give a damn about these other nations. And call me by his grace. And call me by his grace. And we just got the precept in the book of Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 15 that his grace and mercy are to his saints. Read. To reveal his son in me. To what? To, to reveal, reveal his, his son in me. me. Now, what does it mean to reveal his son in me? Because Yahweh Shah is a secret. Give me that in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3 and verse 3. Because these are the mysteries, the revelations, the understanding, the allegories, and similitudes of Yahweh Shah in the ministry. Bring that up. This is the book of Acts. Matter of fact, give me Romans chapter 16 and verse number 25. And bring up that precept I just called. Book of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 3. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 3. Bring it out. How that by revelation. How by revelation. Revelation means to reveal. Paul is speaking in the church of Ephesus. How by revelation. He made known unto me the mystery. The what? The, the mystery. mystery. What is the Gentile? The, the mystery. What is the Gentile? The, the mystery. mystery. What is the Gentiles coming in? The, the mystery. mystery. These are mysteries. Paul got literally taught the mysteries. Where's the account of Paul breaking down and having the same vision of Daniel? The same vision of John the Revelator? The same vision of what? A bucket? Nahum? That's not in there. What is the revelations and mysteries? The Gentiles. Which men with no understanding and are not taught have no understanding in. Read on. As I wrote a form in few words. In few words, Paul is writing these mysteries down. Now, when you go into the mysteries, you go into the book of 1 Timothy. You go into Titus. You go into Hebrews. You go into 1 and 2 Thessalonians. You go into the church of Corinth that was the lowest level church. You go into Thessalonica, which had no faith. You understand what Paul is going into when he writes these epistles. And you gain the understanding. Why? Because they are mysteries. Read. Verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. It said in other ages these mysteries was not known to everybody, man. So when was the mysteries given to the whole wide world? When can anybody pick up this book, crack it open, and understand the mysteries, man? And this book is to the elect, man. This book is to the one third. This book is to the men and women that cry day and night for Yahweh. Shout this, out this book is for the men that want to be saved out of captivity in Babylon, man. Yo. This is not a book for the whole wide world, man. And I'm tired of you Christians. I'm tired of you liars. I'm tired of you pastors. I'm tired of you thieves right. taking my book and my heritage and making it about the whole wide world. Right. Right. Today, man. Read. As it is now revealed. That is what? That is, is now revealed. revealed. Now it's real. It's revealed in 2020, literally 2022, today it's been revealed on the Sabbath day, the truth, man. You haven't heard it, now you know, man. You're not going to take this Bible, let it be twisted up, you sit in a pew like a damn puppet, and you get manipulated by the so-called white man. Read. Unto his holy apostles. Unto his what? Unto his, his holy apostles. Are we niggas? Unto, Unto his, his holy, holy apostles. How well we understand the scriptures? Unto, Unto his, his holy, holy apostles. apostles. Because the men that are reading the Bible, the men that are standing out here, the men that are shaking their hand, the men that are prophets are his holy apostles that understand this word which is a mystery give me the book of second peter chapter 3 and verse 15 second peter chapter 3 and verse number 15 huh? the book of second peter chapter 3 and 15 an account that the long suffering of our lord is salvation even as our beloved brother paul even as our beloved brother paul give me the book by the philippians chapter 3 and verse 3 read also according to the wisdom given unto him according to the wisdom Paul never literally went to grade school he sat down at grade school and then he got taught somebody was banging on the chalkboard this is point a and this is point b no Paul was already an elder and a Pharisee and built up in the law so it only would make sense through the hand and mercy of Yahweh for him to be revealed the grace and mercy and faith which are mysteries unto the Gentiles which are spread abroad read hath written unto you Verse 16. Come. As also in all his epistles. And also in all his epistles. Speaking in them of these things. And which are some things hard to be understood. Hard to be understood. Nobody's going to crack open the book you understand of 1 Thessalonians and just understand it. Nobody's going to open these epistles up and just be a doctor of faith and understand it. Read. Which they that are unlearned. They that are unlearned. And unstable. And unstable. Rest. As they do also the other scriptures. Unto their own destruction. Until what? Unto their own destruction. Until what? Unto their own destruction. They're going 
going to wrestle. They're going to get the book of First Peter. They're going to take it up, and they're going to start fighting it, and then they're going to start getting cracked down, and then they're going to be in the damn dust, man, because they wrestle with the book of First Peter. They wrestle with the book of Second Peter. They wrestle with the book of all the mighty epistles because they have no understanding. They were not taught these things. Go back to the book of Galatians where you were. Chapter 1 and start at verse number 18. The book of Galatians chapter 1 and 18. Then after three years. Then after three years. You understand? Now go to verse 16. Verse 16. To reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. That I may preach him among the heathen. Now who are the heathen that this is talking about, man? Give me the book of Second Edges. You have to understand the context and the situation of what's going on. Second Edges 2 and 33. Because without, you're going to be confused. And you're not going to have any understanding of what's going on. That's why you have to be brought up, you have to be patient, you have to be taught, and you have to pray for mercy and grace to understand these things, man. Everybody doesn't know the Lord's real name. You got people calling him Yehuda, Yehushiwi, Rachashiwi, Yawakawa, and everybody just beating on a damn drum and dancing, Yehushiwi, Yawakawa. Everybody has no understanding. Everybody's lost, man. They calling him Jesus Christ. They just calling him God. They calling him Lord. Give me the book of Sirach chapter 17 and verse 10. Because the Lord said the elect will praise his holy name. Meaning the elect are going to know these things. They're not going to open a book of wisdom of Solomon. What was it written? Who read it? They're not going to open up the book of Genesis. Uh, is it a serpent? Or is it a man? They're not going to open up the book of Revelation. Is he John the Revelator or John the Baptist? <laughs> They're going to open it up. They're going to pray for grace and mercy. The Lord is going to rain down a spirit on them like Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 7. And they're going to start prophesying. Bring that up. It's the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 17 and verse 10. You know. The elect shall praise his holy name. What the Lord say? The elect shall praise his holy name. What the Lord say? The elect shall praise his holy name. The elect is going to praise his holy name for the understanding. Bring out what I call. This is the book of 2nd Andrews chapter 2 and verse 33. Bring it out. All right, Andrews. Receive a charge of the Lord. Now you have Ezra, which is a priest, ready in the law of God. You understand? Literally from the sea line of Aaron. And this is literally in captivity under the Persian Medo Empire around 438 BC. Read. Upon the Mount of Horeb. Now upon the Mount of Horeb in front of the children of Israel. Then I should go unto Israel. Then I should what? Then I should go unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they said me as not. And that's exactly what's going on to this very day. We shake the hand, we pull him around, we take a damn rope, we whip it like a damn cowboy, we throw it around you, we struggle, we ask for help, and somebody else get the rope, and they still break free, man. Because they're a wild donkey in the wilderness, and they don't want to be taught. They don't want to be learned. They don't want any understanding. They want to kick and bray and be confused in a land of destruction, where no water is, in the wilderness. Read. They sent me a nut and despise the commandment of the Lord. Read. And therefore I say unto you. Therefore I say unto you. O ye heathen. What did he call them? O ye heathen. What did he call them? O ye heathen. O ye heathen. Give me Galatians, right, chapter 3 and verse 8. Read. They hear and understand. Yeah, they hear and understand. These men don't have mystery ears. Their ears fell off. You understand? Everybody has ears. Everybody can perceive and hear things. But they don't understand. Read. Look for your shepherd. Do what? Look, Look for, for your, your shepherd. shepherd. Nobody looks for their shepherd. Because they have their shepherd, T.D. Jakes. They have their shepherd, the weed. They have their shepherd, their pastors, and their false apostles and teachers. Read. He shall give you everlasting rest. And he shall give you everlasting rest. And all the way from 400 B.C., you understand, to all the way to 48 A.D., they were called heathens. Bring that up. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 3, and verse 8. Bring it up. And the scripture... For seeing that Yahweh would justify the heathen, what? Would, would justify, justify the, the heathen. heathen. He would justify the heathen. Who are those heathens that got justified? The children of Israel. Right, That's right. not talking about the whole wide world. You know, through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, "In thee shall all nations be blessed." So all the way from the time of Abraham, for the twelfth chapter, you understand of Genesis. So all the way to the 12, 17th chapter of Genesis, all the way to the book of Romans, the 4th chapter, the Lord is talking about that what? Faith was to Abraham, huh? All the way from old, which is a foreshadow of the law of Yahweh Shah the righteous, which is better things for it to come. You want to stab it all? So then they which be of faith are blessed with faith of Abraham. For as many are as are the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written. Curses everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Right, so you literally had Paul sent to these churches that were in Greece, 
When you go to Macedonia, right, Thessalonica, and he went to journeys, right? And he was traveling in the snow. He traveling in all type of terrain. Give me the book of 2 Corinthians, right? Chapter 20, so like in chapter 11 and verse number 23. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 16 and verse number 5, man. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 28 and verse number 17, man. And we're going to go through these accounts. Because these men, give me the book of Acts chapter 9 and verse 23. Because Paul was led through a damn basket off of a wall. Paul was suffering shipwreck. Paul was literally in captivity under the Roman Empire. Paul was going through all of these different things for the hope of Israel, man. Right, that's that's right. it. Nobody else. Go to the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 20. Right, I'm with that too. I'm with that first. Give me the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 20. Because Paul said, man, I taught you publicly, man. I came outside. I shook the hand. I didn't hide myself like these Christian pastors. They go say their sermon, right? They go take their rag. They go wipe it. They put it in their rag box, right? Then they grab the collection plate. They go back there with Miss Dab Susan, right, for half an hour after uh, church, right, to counsel her. Jesus! And her damn husband is in the pew stomping at Stacey Adams. They've been in there a minute. Hmm, wonder what they're doing. And then you hear knocking and screaming. Sister Susan come out from the back all sweaty. Hmm, Pastor Shaw, you sure brought it out today. And then she go home sweaty and stinky, man. This isn't the Christian pastor church, man. These are apostles on the highways and byways. Bring that up. This is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Bring it out. But I fear, at least by any means, as a serpent. I want Acts chapter 20 and verse 20. This is the book of Acts, chapter 20 and verse 20. Bring it out. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. And Paul said he kept back nothing. Meaning any mystery, any allegory in the streets to be able to be prophesied, to go out throughout the four corners. He taught those men. Read. But have showed you and have taught you publicly. And have what? And have taught you publicly. And have taught, taught, taught you publicly. Where the pass is at, man? Because ain't nobody out here but the men of the Lord, man. Paul said he taught these men publicly. Read. And from house to house. So Paul was going from this house, catching a damn ship ride to this house. Give me the book of Acts chapter 18 and 18. Then he went to this house. Then he went to that house. Then he went to this providence. Then he went to that providence. When you read the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 4 all the way down, he went everywhere, man. He went to Syria. He went to Arabia. He went to study with the Greece. He went to Macedonia. He went to all of these different places for the hope and chain of Israel, being a prisoner of Yahweh Bring that up. It's the book of Acts chapter 18 and verse 18. Bring it up. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while. And then took his leave of the brethren. And then took his leave on ship to the brethren. And sailed this to Syria. And then what? And sailed yeah, this, this to Syria. Syria. So what is Paul doing in Syria, man? And there are Israelites everywhere on this earth. They're in Africa. They're in Arabia. You understand? They're in Saudi, Iran. They're all these different places, man. They're even in London, man. Everywhere you go on the face of this earth, there are Israelites. And you have apostles, which the men of the Lord, you understand, set up by Yahweh Shai, to go out there and teach him. Read. And with him, when with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head and Centria, for he had a vow. For he had a vow. So we took his leave through ship to go out there and prophesy to these men. Give me the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 3. Bring out that precept. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 3. But I fear, at least by any means, as a serpent, but go Eve through his sublim uh, sublimity. So you, right, subtility. subtility. So you literally have a serpent, but Gal and Eve, coming up, which is a man, with doctrines. Now these men don't come up with hairy garments, and they stink, and they just walking up, hey, I got something for you. No, these men are very subtile. When you go into the history of the book of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, you have false apostles coming in unaware in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 13. Right, get that real fast. Hold that and get that. And these men were literally seducing the people. They were coming in with doctrines, and they were literally saying, God knows what, seducing these men. Just like in the church of Galatians. Like the, uh, Paul said, O oh Galatians, O oh foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you? Who have literally seduced you to believe these strange doctrines? Bring that up. Verse 13. For such are at, for such are false apostles. The Lord says such are false apostles. Read. Deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. See how certain men, they transform themselves. They say, I am a man of God. They wear a suit. They berate and bewitch the people. And then through their subtility, they trick the simple minds of men that have no understanding. Right. Instead of bowing down, smoking upon your chest, crying out for wisdom and knowledge from the Lord to be able to be taught and built up. You know? And no marvel, 
for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Huh? And the last time I checked, I've never seen an Israelite run from the scriptures. Right. I've never seen a man of the Lord bow down and flee like that, man. Right. I've never seen our forefathers run in battle, bow down and scream and run and flee, man. We're not running from a damn thing up here, man. Right. If there's right. anything I'm going to defend, it's the words of the Lord, man. Right. 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 Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 14. If we're going to stand mightily, whether it be by life or whether it be by death, man. Somebody come up with a damn gun. Stop teaching. We're going to call upon the name of the Lord, man. And they literally was doing that in the book of Acts, the fourth chapter. They said, you will not speak on that name. And what did they do? Verse 18 all the way down. They still shook their hand. They still yeah. prophesied. Peter got locked up. He got out of jail in the morning and still shook their hand. King David, he literally woke up in the middle of the night in the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 63, and praised the Lord. Paul, when he got locked up, you understand? What did he do at 12 o'clock? He shook the hand and praised the Lord. It was an earthquake, man. Yes, man. The real men are going to prophesy to you fall out in this thing and right. die and magnify the name of the Lord. Right. They don't run from a damn thing, man. Right. Bring that up. Ephesians 1 and 14. Philippians 1 and 14. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 14. This is the book of Acts. Book of Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 14. Come on, bring it up. This is the book of Philippians chapter 1 and verse 14. Bring it up. And it reads, And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bond. Hey, Paul said many of the men of the Lord were waxing confident by his bonds. You understand? Because Paul was getting locked up. He was getting locked up for selling weed like these niggas out here, man. And fighting and looting and thotting and tricking, man. Paul was out there teaching the words of life. When you read the book of 1 Timothy, go to 1 Timothy, man. Right? Go to, matter of fact, yeah, give me 1 Timothy 1 and 15. Paul was getting locked up. When you read the book of Philemon, you understand? Paul was locked up in his bonds and literally through the gospel permitted Onesimus, man. You understand? So Paul was getting locked up doing the work of the Lord. So this thing is in the game. Paul is not getting locked up for the white man. Paul's not getting locked up for the A-Rap, man. He's getting locked up for me and you so we can have a chance through the spirit of Yahweh Shah to wake up our people. And we all out here ready to get locked up for the That's people. Right. We all out here ready to get beat up, right. man. That's We're right. going to do the same thing Paul did thousand years ago. Bring right. it up. I'm much more bold to speak the word without fear. Without what? Without, without fear. fear. Without what? Without, without fear. fear. Without fear. Meaning it don't matter who come up, man. A doctor, a philosopher, a scholar, a nigga, a white man. I don't give a damn who come up here, man. Because they came in a lion's den. Bring that up. Right. This is it. the book of Acts, chapter 20 and verse 3. Bring it up. And there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him, it said there abode three months. So Paul was going trip after trip. It said he went to Syria. Go back to the book of Galatians. Right, chapter 1 and verse number 18. Right? Galatians chapter 1 and verse 18. And give me the book of Acts chapter 28 and three verses from the last verse. So when Paul was doing these things, he was there for three months. Three. When the, and when the Jews lay wait for him, right? As he was about to sail to Syria. As he was what? As, as he, he was, was about, about to, to sail, sail to Syria. Right, he's about to sail to Syria. He proposed to return through Macedonia. To Macedonia. And there accompanied him into Asia. Into Asia. So Peter of Berea and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Sassandus, the apostles that went on him with his journey, and Gaius of Derbe. Right, Gaius is three Gaiuses in the scriptures. You have Gaius and Third John. You have these different Gaiuses in Acts. You understand? You have these men that Paul was accompanying in his bonds. Read on. And Timotheus. And Timotheus. And of Asia. The Greek. Right, read on. And of Asia, Tychius and Trophimus. These going before Terry for us at Troas. And we sailed away from Philippi. And we did what? And, and we, we sailed, sailed away, away from Philippi. Why is Paul going all around the world, man? Read. After the, after the days of unleavened bread. After you can rest right there. Bring that up. This is the book of Acts chapter 28 and verse 29. Give me 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 16 and verse 5. And when he said th these words, the Jews departed. And he... And had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two year, two whole years in his in, in his own hired house. In his own hired house. So Paul had a house. Paul was a tent maker. Paul traveled. Paul sailed. Paul was literally in blizzards in the wintertime in the church of Corinthians. Huh? Right. Bring that out in the book of 1 Corinthians 16. And verse number 5. Start at 4. This is the book of Corinthians chapter 16 and verse number 4. Get out. 
And if it be me, then I go also. They shall go with me. They shall what? They, they shall, shall go, go with, with me. me. Hey, Paul said, if it be me, whoever's really ready to do this work, they're going to go with me. Right. Now I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia. And it may be, and it may, it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you. Hey, what? Hey, yeah, hey, and hey, winter with you. And winter with you. Paul was out there in the winter time, man. He didn't come out when it was just hot. That's right. Paul didn't say, well, you know what? It's hot out here. Everybody's out here. This is the time to labor. Paul was out there in the blizzards. He was out there in the summertime. He was out there in heat strokes. He was out there in the damn blizzard. Everything and every season for Israel's sake. Right. Right. Paul was out there doing the work, writing these epistles. Don't you know in the book of 2nd, uh, uh, give me that in the book of 2nd Corinthians, chapter 2 and verse 3. Paul said he was crying when he was writing these letters, man. Paul was literally crying. Was Paul crying for the so-called white man to be saved? Uh, no. Paul said, I want him to be saved. I do me a, yeah, come on, uh, hello fast. Uh. He wasn't out there writing for the so-called white man. When Paul was writing, he was crying on these letters and writing and writing for Israel's sake. Bring that up. It's the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 2 and verse 3. Bring it up. And I wrote the same unto you. And I wrote the same unto you. Lest when I came, I shall have sorrow from them. I shall have sorrow for them. So Paul cared for the church. He said, man, I, I fear lest, lest I come unto you. I'm going to have sorrow and compassion because I love the church. I love my people. I love my brethren. I love the Israelites. Read. I shall have sorrow from them. I hope I ought to rejoice, having confidence in you all, that my joy is the joy of you all. Read. For out of much affliction. For out of much affliction. And anguish of heart. And what? And, and anguish, anguish of heart. heart. What was Paul doing? And, and anguish of heart. heart. Paul was out there crying, man. Huh? Getting beat. Getting whooped. Getting locked up for you. You understand? Through the hands of Yahweh shot. Read. I wrote unto you with many tears. With what? With, with many, many tears. tears. What was Paul doing? With, with many, many tears. tears. And it wasn't for the so-called white man. Right. It wasn't for the goddamn devil that the Bible speaks of. Right. Right. It was for the Israelites. When Paul was out there writing, he was locked up. He was in his bars. When he read to the book of Ephesus, he was locked up. You understand? When literally John, the revelator, he wrote on the island of Patmos, he was locked up. You understand? And we're locked up prophesying in Babylon the Great, man. To this very day. That's right. We're already ready to do the same things from old. Read. Not that ye should be grieved, but that ye might know the love which I have more abundantly. Check that out, man. That you may know the love. I'm always crying, getting beat, sucked upside the head, getting locked up, getting tormented, getting drowned. All for you. Read. Know the love which I have more abundantly for unto you. But if any can have caused grief, he have not grieved me, but in part. You can rest right there. And this whole Bible is for the children of Israel, man. Right, Nobody right. else. Nobody else can creep in unaware. They can't tiptoe. They can't kick down the doors. This is the church. This is the small temple in the last days. And Lord willing, this is the hopeful elect. Right. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 42 and verse number 13. 42 and 13. Bring that on. Read it mightily. This is the book of Isaiah. Chapter 42 and verse 13. Read it the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, war. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long only my peace. Read it right. I have long time only my peace. What the Lord say? I have long time only my peace. I have long time only my, my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now I cry like a traveling woman. I will destroy and travail and walk from your shoulder. From your shoulder. Bring it up. 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 Bring